What up, y'all? I'm back again. And today I wanted to go over, does the narcissist miss you? What do y'all think? Let's not get it twisted, right? Do they miss you? Because listen, there's a lot of, there's a lot of punk channels out there that be asking you this. And they be talking about it all day, every day. Every day is, is how the narcissist is waiting for you, missing you, needing you, regretting leaving you. Okay, listen, you already been gaslit enough, y'all, okay? So I'm gonna give you some stuff, but I want you to get off those channels, man, because those channels is weak. You remember we talk about stay out of the fantasy, stay out of the fantasy. All right, well, listen to this. When you're thinking that the narcissist is always gonna want you back, you're going right back into another type of fantasy, okay? Getting my download, y'all. Ha! All right, so listen, man. Listen, you go on them channels and you listen to all this stuff. You know what you're doing is you're bringing up the past. Like, literally. I mean, it's one thing to get on these channels, man, and, and heal, you know, and find ways to heal. Listen, I, I'm telling you, I mean, for the new people, it is what it is because uh, there may be, there's kind of somewhat of a... Uh, a metamorphosis that goes you go through. I mean, I went through it too. You know, uh, for several months, you'll watch a lot of those channels so that you can, uh, you know, maybe find a way around uh, to to be with the narcissist and uh, and cope with it and have a decent life with them. Some some uh, hack, right? You know, maybe if I find. Uh, if I can solve all their problems and act a certain way and in different situations, I can keep this narcissistic relationship together and we can be together. Listen, I know what y'all are thinking because I was there, okay? Uh, but, you know, if you wanna watch that stuff for a time, that's up to you, I did. But I didn't have somebody out here like me telling you that it's weak and it's not gonna help your healing. You know, when you go to these channels, I'd be talking about how the narcissist regrets leaving you and they miss you every day. It may feel good inside, but it's kind of like the wrong coping mechanism. And so I'm just going to tell you how it is. I always say, you know, like, uh, I, at least I don't want to lie to you, man. Like, that's what I say about them pastors on TV. Uh, at least if they had a heart, they could tell you the truth, even if they are not living it. I would respect that. But a lot of times they ain't even telling you the truth. So, um, but the truth is, and anybody uh, that is into uh, coaching on narcissism or anything should, should, should tell you this, that you shouldn't be listening to that crap. But I'm going to go over a few things. First of all, when it comes to... Uh, the new supply and if you think they're happy with the new supply you can forget it they're they're older and they put up with less every month that they age because they have more garbage you know they say they swept it under the carpet well the narcissist every every month is of the of their life every month every 30 days is sweeping another 30 days of junk under their carpet that's gonna have to bubble over okay like a volcano and that's what happens. That's why that they, when they purge and when they rage and when they flip out like that, that's uh, that's why, y'all. That's part of it. I mean, part of it is because they've given themselves over to something dark and, and uh, evil. So, I mean, that alone. See, this is the thing. When you start, when you start listening to that stuff uh, about the narcissist missing you and everything, you, you get into that fantasy again. And what do I always say? The enemy gets you when you when he takes you into a fantasy. That's what that's what drugs and alcohol does. It takes you into a fantasy. That's what uh those uh adult uh you know video channels on on uh the computer do. They take you into a fantasy. Uh that's what the narcissist does. They take you into a fantasy, they they show you the mask. The, the, the truth is, is what's behind the mask. 
they're showing you the mask and getting you to believe the mask. That's the fantasy. Okay, and now when you go to these channels trying to find a way to rationalize how you can work around the narcissist idiosyncrasies, listen, they're cheating on you all the time and pathologically lying and cheating, that right there is enough to walk away from a relationship. But anyway, I'm gonna leave that alone because I did it for several months when I was going through my healing stage, but I wanted to at least air it out. Uh, I don't judge, I just discuss, okay? But this is the thing, man, the narcissist will never be happy. So they'll never be happy uh, with the new supply. Chances are, if you're listening to me, then you are a, what they would consider and call a grade A supply or a primary supply, primary caregiver. Okay, and so if that's the case, the other new supply is probably a flunky or, or could be, could be like you, but probably not because they don't come across us every day. And so, if you've given them your all, then there's not a lot of people out there that give their all. And so, I mean, if when you, that's the thing. And the narcissist is not meant to have long-term successes. It's just not built into them. It's kind of like, uh, you know, a motorcycle, it might go fast, but it, it can't, it can't go too far because it only has a couple of gallons of gas, man. You know, I mean, they can go, I mean, they get more miles per gallon, but that's what the narcissist is like. They, they start up with a relationship real fast, just like a motorcycle is fast, way faster than a car, but it also runs out of gas quicker. And it's very uncomfortable riding on it. <laughs> um, but the narcissist, man, they're like that, for real. And, uh, you know, they gotta be fast to trombone and then they're out of there. Because they know they can come back. Okay, so that's, they're not meant to have long-term successes because they can't, that's not built into their anatomy. I mean, once they've decided to do what they do, their cycle and formed a cycle, once they formed a cycle, then they had an entity in them. Uh, and so, because uh, I believe the cycles are entities. But anyway, this is the deal. The narcissist can only go a short term with somebody before they have to rage out and flip out and uh, devalue and demoralize you and discard you, okay? And so the love to the, you know what the love, you know what the love is to the narcissist? It is the trauma bond. It's to, uh, to trauma bond you. What is that? That's like Stockholm syndrome. That's what they do in the, that's what they would do in the, the, the military camps and brainwashing camps. That's what the narcissist does. Because, you know, I mean, I believe it's all the same entities doing this. I mean, the CIA and all that, all those people and all those other countries, it's all the same spiritual consciousness. And so they, it's the same thing. It's the same, if you look at what, how the, uh, sociopath, psychopath, and, and, and uh, the malignant narcissist treats you and, and uh, how they come at you with this militaristic brainwashing techniques and gaslighting techniques. How, how does it always line up with pure witchcraft from witchcraft books where they are teaching you witchcraft? So if you read books that teach you about rich, witchcraft, it's teaching you straight up narcissism. How could that be? And how could they all be running the same tracks? And then also, when you follow in either the CIA or any of these uh, camps, these military uh, POW camps where they were brainwashing inside, it's just like the narcissist. If you look at a cult, it's just like a narcissist, a cult leader who trains them. It's because it's, they're running off the same entities. The tracks are not the narcissist. It's the, it's the, the track is of the, the entities controlling the narcissist. It's what's behind the mask. I mean, they put forth the fake, but the, the behind the mask is is what's is what the what's really going on, the real hatred. But listen, uh, you, you know, does a lot narcissists love you? I'll tell you what they love, man. They love. Sometimes they love another narcissist, uh, and they don't love them either because they can't love. 
but but they they will go for them. Uh, we should say what they love is is they love another narcissist that has the same weaknesses as they do, but and vulnerabilities as they do sometimes because that makes them feel comfortable. But the problem is is it becomes a big disarray of problems real quick because they can't regulate each other and they can't love each other. I mean, could you imagine you're in a relationship with somebody who couldn't love you? Could you imagine a relationship where two people can't love each other and they're both in competition? How the hell are they gonna get anything done? They can't. What It just works for a short time while they have fuel from us and then they destroy each other. So that's number one, that's what they love for a short time. And then sometimes they will love a narcissist that has some qualities that, and not qualities, but they have uh, a way about them and a lifestyle that they would like to have themselves, okay? And so they will be with a narcissist like that. But again, these don't last long. And so, uh, but th these are some choices that they have that they love but they don't last long because nothing with the narcissist lasts long. They get bored, they're impulsive, they cheat, they lie, and they hate, even that when it comes to the, uh, another narcissist. But this is what they love. They love a narcissist that's just as vulnerable, has just as many uh, weak points as them. But but then they get into, uh, uh, you know, a, a lot of emotion, emotionally deregulated arguments and they break up. And then they like a narcissist that has uh, a lifestyle that they like, okay? But then uh, that breaks up real quick because uh, the narcissist, that, that's probably gonna be an overt narcissist and that overt narcissist is gonna go get a, um, the, the, the uh, covert narcissist or a borderline personality disorder and they're just gonna wear them on their arm. And that's what the overt narcissist would do just for, you know, uh, jewelry, you know, just to make them look good, like luggage, because you're just an object. But that's what he would do. If, that's what an overt narcissist would do in a case like that. Uh, and this is textbook. And then what's next is they, uh, they uh, when it comes to us, they will go for a, uh, they love somebody with a lot of empathy which would be, would, would probably factor into us. Okay, they like a person with a lot of empathy because when you have a lot of empathy, you're gonna be always trying to fix the situation. And that's how the spell works on the empath. But you know, now that we're awake uh, and awoke to this, listen, you could always fall back into that construct. That's why you need to always see the red flags and, and walk away as soon as you see uh, one red flag. Okay, you should be able to, in a love situation, should be able to, I could pick out a red flag, I could find red flags, I'd probably find five or 10 in one sitting uh, with somebody that's trying to be an intimate partner. So you should be pretty, you should be able to school yourself pretty good on that. Okay, so they do like the impact because they like also, not only that you fix the situation, but I'm saying you could fall back into a codependency state, you fall back into a people pleasing state if you don't watch yourself, that's what I'm saying. Uh, just because you're awoke, you want to make sure you don't uh, get, you don't, that's the thing. You stay far away so you don't get caught up in that spell. Uh, what what they would say to, uh, when they would ask alcoholics, how, how do you, uh, you know, minimize, how do you uh, keep keep from, you know, what, what caused you to drink or what caused you to do drugs if it was a drug addict? They would say, oh, I had a bad, a bad day. Well, what do you do? Uh, uh, you know, what do you do when that happens? And, uh, uh, you know, I heard one say one time, I try to minimize those days. That was their number one thing. Okay, and that's what you need to do is minimize your contact with any kind of narcissist. And when you, if you do uh, have some sort of potential relationship, you need to be keen and, and know your red flags and walk away when you need to walk away if they're not right for you. Okay, so they like the empath because they also will fawn them, please them, and they will admire them and give them much, much love. The problem is they don't get it back and it's, uh, it's, it's not good for an empath. So the next would be somebody who has a type A personality because they're very hardworking and they can push sometimes and, and get 
the narcissist to get in a better place in a job situation, a career, and, and in uh, stature. And so they kind of do like that. They also like it because uh, the uh, type A personality is also not a quitter in a relationship. They want to fix it too. They want to figure it out, okay? They're big on figuring out and trying to fix it. And so the narcissist will play that game with you. So the empath and the, and the type A personality will be hard on not trying to leave the relationship, but trying to, to fix it. I used to call it switching gears. I'm gonna switch gears until I find the right gear. This is before I woke up. This is good stuff, y'all. So what else does the narcissist love? Well, that's, that's you know, pretty much what they go for. They also like the strong independent, you know, and so uh, you can look this up, it's textbook. So they will, you always hear that they go for the weak people, but that's not true. That's a fallacy. That's a fallacy because the world always likes to put the, the negative uh, individual at the top, okay? That's what happens. You always get gaslit uh, as the negative being the good one. In, in, any, in most any situation, they're always going to give uh, tons of empathy to the brutal killer and uh, the actual true victim uh, who's warring with them. Uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, we're not going to give you anything. You know, sit down. But that's how the world is because the world's not built for the, the chosen, but they also can't hold them down. And when you wake up, you know how to. So they've been wielding their power against you, unbeknownst to you and couldn't take you down. Now you know your power. So you gotta hone your power. And then you can use your power in ways that uh, will be, There's you're gonna find holes in climates, in situations, in climates of situations. And you're gonna be able to always find a way to poke holes and stuff when they try to, to corner you. And and in the, in the, in the past, you, you might've got uh, caught up in it. But now when you're awoke, you just gotta, you'll see other situations to, to find your way out of it. And um, a lot of times it will destroy the evil individual without you even having to do anything aggressive. So they like strong individuals, individuals that have uh, their own way of doing things and they have their own independence. They have their own, uh, maybe their own company. Okay, but of course, what happens? They're manipulative, they're impulsive, right? So they're gaslighters, they're liars, pathological liars, cheaters, they're thieves, uh, everything, right? This is the thing, they can't, emotionally regulate and so you gotta know that somebody like that is not going to be successful they're never going to be successful and if they're successful it's because they have somebody that's rich that's enabling them and that's it outside of that they will never uh you know really succeed sometimes like some of the uh upper echelon of like maybe a, a, a psychopath or something uh, sometimes can do well, but very rarely will these individuals, you already gave them your everything, man, and they screwed that up. And if, if you gave them your everything and they found a way to screw that up, I mean, what do you, what do you think's gonna, what they're gonna end up with? Really? You know, I'm just trying to, to some give you some good goodness here for all the work you put in with the narcissist listen you gave him blood sweat tears you gave him everything uh, but your identity in fact they were walking around with your identity in the spirit you know uh and so this is what they do but this is the thing what what will they do to the person that's independent they really just want them to to, to break them down that's their love their love is always to find these individuals and manipulate. So if they cannot manipulate you, they don't want to be with you. I said this the other day. If there's nothing to exploit, that's what I said. If there's nothing to exploit, then they're not going to want to be with you. 
That's why that's why if you're depressed and if if they discarded you and you're and you didn't uh, raise back up your vibration so they could come tear it back down, they're not going to come to you. You know why? Because you're going to be needy. You're going to need more help than them. And they can't give you anything. They are always takers. <coughs> always. They're always takers. They never give anything. That's why when you're sick, they run away. When when they knock you down to the ground and, and smush your face in the mud, they walk away. And they won't come back until uh, you won the lottery. Until you uh, forgot, finally forgot about them and healed and, and went out there and got a new career and got a new car and a new home and start looking good, then they're gonna come right around the corner again. Why? Because they love you again? No, they're gonna tell you that. You almost have to take everything for the opposite of what they tell you. If they tell you they love you, they hate you. If they tell you they've seen the light, then they didn't see anything. They're doing the same old job on you. They only can go to a 180 on the vibration scale. So uh, uh, 20 to 180, shame to pride, right? That's an abusive, uh, that's abusive vibration. When you cannot get out of pride because it takes courage. This is real, y'all. Shame to pride, shame to pride, shame to pride, trauma bond, trauma bond. You cannot do anything good. You're, oh, it's an abusive, that is a consistent abusive relationship. When you're 180 on a vibration chart or less and you can't uh, uh, vibrate higher than a 180 ever, you are an abuser. That is your character and it does not change. And that's why they say the narcissist fixed. This is good stuff, y'all. I'm going to stop right here. But does the narcissist love you? They love you for a time, but they love you for your energy, your fuel, your sex, uh, your money, you taking them on outings, you admiring them, caring for them, doing everything for them, petting them, and taking them out to nice meals and buying them nice gifts. Uh, how does the narcissist show you love? They may buy you a nice gift once in a while. If it's probably a male, because the females are cheap. <laughs> uh, they may buy you a nice gift. Like, uh, a $2,000 purse, right? To a woman. But then guess what? They're not, they're, they're doing it because they cannot emotionally give you love. So they have to do something. They feel weird. So they'd rather spend money on you. But that's a cop out, you know, that's a, that's a crutch. That's, that's, that's like a coward's way out. They can't give you love. So they give you a purse instead. That's their love. Uh, they give you an object and they treat you like an object. So the love they give you is an object. And the the love uh, that, that you think you have in a relationship is, is not. It's objective. And you're the object. And objects get old, right? They get worn out. And you toss them and you get a new one. And I'm just giving you, that's that's the way objects are viewed in our minds and hearts. And that's the way, that's why they call it, us objects because that's how the narcissist acts towards us. But they only give you a, a very expensive gift to make you feel bad, to make you feel like you always owe them. The narcissist, they wrote the book on game when it comes to, uh, uh, you know, these people that want to be players and stuff. An old player... Before they had the title of narcissism, a player is the narcissist. It's just, that's what the, the title was before narcissism was around. They'd call them players. I'm a player. <laughs> and uh, uh, then a lot of people look up to them because that's what society promotes these days. They promote, they promote trash. And anyway, so... Uh, if you can give me a like and a subscription and a thumbs up, I appreciate it. Uh, I'll come at you with some more loving on the narcissist tomorrow. But uh, y'all got to stand tall. And, I, and I'm just giving you sometimes 
uh, a hard podcast, man, because I, I am your friend. I I have not made a dime off this channel. I've I've lost money, so it's it's not uh it's not that it's not that I put you know a lot of time into this. I do it because I want straight and strictly just want to help people. And that's it. And so I enjoy helping people, but I also know that it's much needed. Uh, and I like to give my own twist on it, my own version from my heart. And I, I am very uh, spiritually intuitive and I know uh, the emotional field very well and I know the Lord. So this is my take on things. And listen, man, this is the right take. There's, no, I don't think there's not another take out there like this. I'm not trying to give myself props. I'm just saying that you know, sin is to miss the mark. It's kind of like a bullseye, right? A bullseye is to, to hit the mark, man. Sin is to miss it. It's to miss the, the whole the whole dartboard when you're throwing darts. And, you know, a lot of channels will, they're not giving you a spiritual side. They're not uh, talking about demonology. They're not talking about these malevolent, uh, malevolent spirits. Uh, and what's really going on in these tracks they're running on and and they're not talking about how you, you really need the lord to truly heal so anyway uh until next time y'all uh stand tall and soldier up peace we out